I'm Nick Westergaard, and this is On Brand, helping you tell your story. My guest this week is Matt Abrahams. When it comes to managing anxiety, first and foremost, we have to realize that it's normal and natural. It's part of being human. And when it comes to managing it, and again, I say manage because I don't think we ever can, nor do we want to completely overcome our anxiety. Anxiety actually helps you. It helps you focus. It gives you energy. But we want to manage it so it doesn't manage us. Matt Abrahams is a leading expert in the field of communication and a lecturer in organizational behavior at Stanford University's Graduate School of Business, where he also hosts the popular, award-winning podcast, Think Fast, Talk Smart. A sought-after keynote speaker and consultant, his new book is Think Faster, Talk Smarter, How to Speak Successfully When You're Put on the Spot. My interview with Matt Abrahams is coming right up, but first... Support for this and all the other podcasts on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. Yes, you can use AI to make your job as a marketer easier. Momento is built to put the power of AI in your hands. It can write social media captions, have it watch or listen to a podcast and suggest, then automatically create social media posts to promote the show. Heck, it can even listen to a podcast episode, then write a poem about it you can use on your company blog. Go check it out. MPN listeners can try it for free at bit.ly slash Momento MPN. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Momento MPN. Hey, creators, podcasters, and brands, if you work on Instagram at all, you have to be tired of the limitations of link in bio. Well, there's a solution. Stampede.social is the ultimate Instagram tool that will change the way you engage with customers, fans, and followers. With Stampede.social, you go beyond a single bio link and instead slide into your fans' DMs. Fire off an automated direct link to wherever you want to send them straight from your posts and lives. This link is only sent to the fans who ask for it, so you'll know exactly who loves your content the most. And Stampede.Social does so much more. It gives you back the power of knowing who is engaging with you. It makes it easy to engage with them using AI. And using Stampede.Social gives you insights about how your Instagram profile is performing with super robust reports. Drive more clicks, more sales, more followers, and have more time to do what you really love, creating that amazing content. Join the ranks of the world's savviest Instagram creators who already trust Stampede.Social. It's a true game changer and will transform the way you connect and engage with your Instagram fans forever. Just for you creators, use our limited time exclusive promo code MPN50. That's MPN50 and get 50% off any monthly or annual subscription tier at checkout. Are you ready to create a Stampede of fans back to your content? Don't miss out on this special deal. Head over to Stampede.Social. Matt Abrahams, welcome to On Brand. Thanks, Nick. I am excited to be here with you. You know, I I had a different way I was going to start this podcast, but we really tested out, I I feel like, the thesis of your book of of talking spontaneously uh, and and trying to figure out uh, various uh, interview technology funnery. But you know, it reminds me of the fact that so many of your episodes have touched on something that I don't think we talk enough about with business communication. And we focus very specifically on these concrete deliverables. I don't like love that word of writing, of presenting, but so much happens in the in-between. And I feel like you've created a book that can be a manual for for the in-between. Thank you for that. And I think you're right. We, we, we focus so much on the product that we produce in our communication that we don't always think about the communication that goes into getting that product out or how we have to defend it or how we have to represent it. And, and those are all spontaneous. And you and I certainly have had a bunch of spontaneity in getting this recorded. <laughs> uh, and, and, but we're, we're doing what, what needs to be done and, and we're, we're persisting through it and we're getting creative and, and yet able to stay calm and collected. And that's really what Think Faster, Talk Smarter is all about. And, and it highlights just how important those moments in between the deliverables, as you call them, uh, are important for us. And I, I do have an impromptu talk assignment in my uh, MBA business communication class that I teach, and it mm-hmm. is a constant source of stress. And yet in, in the evals, there are always thanks for it because it is something that that comes up 
almost constantly, hey, can you stand up and say a few words? Can you uh, introduce this topic at the next meeting? So with that, uh, granted, it is an, an entire book, but what <laughs> is the the recommended approach when we're given those put on the spot moments? Well, first, as a as a fellow uh, graduate school of business, you know, instructor, I applaud you for giving this assignment because most <laughs> people who teach this don't. They they teach the more formal plan presenting and communication, which is important, absolutely. But but inviting your students to experience this is great. So when it comes to speaking in the moment, that is answering questions, giving feedback, making small talk, introducing people, giving tributes all of these different types of spontaneous speaking, it's really about two fundamental things. It's about your mindset and about your messaging. And in the book, I go through a six-step methodology. The first four are mindset-related. The last two are messaging-related. But we have to first and foremost ground ourselves in the moment, manage our anxiety. From there, we have to let go of the desire to be perfect, it is all about connection, not perfection. And then from there, we have to see these situations as opportunities, not as something that uh, we perceive as challenges or threats. And then we have to listen really, really well. It, it seems ironic that it, we're talking about speaking and communicating in the moment, but listening is actually super important. And once we do those mindset things, the next thing we have to work on is how we structure the material. That is to formulate it in a way that is easy for people to receive. And then we have to make it as concise and precise as we can. So those are the six steps lumped together. But really, it's about mindset and messaging that makes the difference. I'm so glad you brought up the the mindset side of things because uh, as I, when I knew we were going to be speaking, I uh, went and I, I loved the podcast and am a frequent listener. But I kind of went back and revisited and kind of added some to to my queue for the weekend. And as I was scrolling through them, there's really quite a few on this theme of what you just mentioned of anxiety. And I think that that's a lot of what we bring to to the table. You've talked with so many smart people from from you know the neuroscience standpoint, from you know, with theatrical backgrounds, which I love as a as a recovering theater major myself. <laughs> um, what what are your big takeaways on you know we love to bring up the fact that people are more terrified than of public speaking than you know deaf heights all of those things. But what have you learned about what we can actually do about it? Yeah. So I have spent a lot of my career helping people to feel more comfortable and confident in their communication. In other words, is managing anxiety. My first book, Speaking Up Without Freaking Out, is all about that topic. And there's a lot that we know from an academic point of view that can help people. The problem is we, we haven't been very good at getting it out there. So when it comes to managing anxiety, first and foremost, we have to realize that it's normal and natural. It's part of being human. Upwards of 85% of people report getting anxious in high stakes communication situations. Quite frankly, I think the other 15% are lying. I think we could make them nervous too if we had to. And when it comes to managing it, and again, I say manage because I don't think we ever can, nor do we want to completely overcome our anxiety. Anxiety actually helps you. It helps you focus. It gives you energy. But we want to manage it so it doesn't manage us. And so we have to take a two-pronged approach. We have to manage symptoms and sources. So Nick, let me ask you, when you get nervous speaking in front of others, what happens for you? I perspire and blush. That's the number one thing that happens for me. Oh, I'm I'm really glad we we just went there because it's like the sweat thing and yeah and first I I think that it's good that we're we're talking about it because I think a lot of times people assume that we don't get anxious because we teach this we talk a lot we speak <laughs> about this and and absolutely it does and for whatever reason I'm going through a a season of sweat. So I, <laughs> I love I, the alliteration, but not the image. So. No. Well, and plus, 
it, you know, it just, you know, so I, I was listening to, I forget which one of your episodes, but it was like, yeah, I've, it's, it's, I, I think it was the neuroscience, uh, yeah, with episode. Andrew Huberman, maybe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Talking about like the, the adrenaline of it and it's my body yeah. wanting to be active and that was yeah. instructive to me, but yeah, it's like, I've got to ditch the sport jacket cause, uh. And then it, you end up in like a meta place because it's like, um, God, now what do I look like? Does my, you know, do I have, do I have Richard Nixon flop sweat here? So, um, just <laughs> you are dating, the- you, you are, you are of my vintage and you are dating <laughs> yourself, uh, because half your listeners are going to be like, first, who's Richard Nixon? And then second, what's, the, um, yeah. So I like, like me, you know, I, and so yes, people are often surprised that people who do what we do for a living, that is teach communication skills, uh, get nervous. It's, it's again, part of the condition. Now I, you probably like me have learned how to manage it in most circumstances, but there are still times where I get nervous and, and there are things we can do. So in terms of symptoms, the single best thing you can do is to take some deep belly breaths. And what's important is that that exhale be longer than the inhale. In that particular episode on my Think Fast, Talk Smart podcast, you mentioned, that's exactly what I learned in that moment. I always thought, hey, just take a deep breath. I did not know that the exhale is is one where all the magic happens. So you want your exhale to be longer than your inhale. For those of us that perspire We also likely blush, and those are related to our core body temperature going up. When you get nervous, you get hotter, at least in your core. What happens to the extremities is they get colder. So people will say, like, my fingers feel cold, but but I'm sweating uh, and my chest feels warm. Your body's very smart. It's trying to protect you. It is you speaking when when you're under pressure, your body feels as if it's under threat. So you're protecting all the important stuff, which happens to be in the core of our bodies at the expense of what's on the extremes. So a way to reduce that core body temperature going up, which is a result of your heart beating faster and your body tensing. So you're pushing more blood through tighter tubes. It's like when you exercise, when you exercise, you sweat, right? That's because you get hotter. Uh, So we can cool ourselves down. Single best thing you can do, I do this every time I get nervous about speaking, hold something cold in the palms of your hand. The palms of your hand are thermoregulators for your body, just like your forehead or the back of your neck. If you've ever had a fever and you've put a a cold compress on your forehead, you've felt its impact. The palms of your hand work the same way. On a cold morning, if you've ever held a warm cup of tea or coffee and felt it warm you up, We're just doing the same thing in reverse. So there are things you can do to manage both symptoms and sources to feel better. Well, I I feel like everybody got like a a, a side uh, a ringside seat for (laughs) fixing sweaty neck. So there you go. This was like a a real time podcast uh, (laughs) analysis diagnosis. And there you uh, go. But, you know, it's it's always interesting to me, too, the diverse sources of guests and input. You know, I mentioned theater, neuroscience. Uh, it, you know, it's it's so interesting that in such a an important skill set, you know, it, it kind of takes all types almost to to bring all of this this together. How do you find uh, interesting guests to learn from to kind of tie all this back to the work that we do speaking and communicating? Yeah, I mean, so one of the really nice things, as you well know, is that communication touches on so many subjects. And so there are lots of just fascinating ideas floating around. I happen to be at an academic institution full of amazingly bright people doing, you know, groundbreaking research in lots of fields. So I I have uh, a lot of of people around to interview. I personally am very curious and I try to stay well-read, not just in my field, but in other fields. And then uh, as you you know, you build a network of people and people share with you like, oh, if you liked my research, you might want to talk to this other person who's doing something similar. So there's a whole, it's a confluence of all of those things that lead to the people I get a chance to speak with and, and hopefully share with others, just like you do, you know, it's, it's a true honor uh, and privilege to, to not only learn from these people, but to also help others learn from these people. And I never forget that, that what I do is really serve as a conduit from these experts to, to get to people who might not have access like I do to some of these folks. So that's, so I'm always on the lookout for creative new things related to communication. On brand, we'll be right back. 
after this. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right, over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, creators, podcasters, and brands, if you work on Instagram at all, you have to be tired of the limitations of link in bio. Well, there's a solution. Stampede.social is the ultimate Instagram tool that will change the way you engage with customers, fans, and followers. With Stampede.social, you go beyond a single bio link and instead slide into your fans' DMs. Fire off an automated direct link to wherever you want to send them straight from your posts and lives. This link is only sent to the fans who ask for it, so you'll know exactly who loves your content the most. And Stampede.social does so much more. It gives you back the power of knowing who is engaging with you. It makes it easy to engage with them using AI and using stampede.social gives you insights about how your Instagram profile is performing with super robust reports. Drive more clicks, more sales, more followers, and have more time to do what you really love, creating that amazing content. Join the ranks of the world's savviest Instagram creators who already trust stampede.social. It's a true game changer and will transform the way you connect and engage with your Instagram fans forever. Just for you creators, use our limited time exclusive promo code MPN50. That's MPN50 and get 50% off any monthly or annual subscription tier at checkout. Are you ready to create a stampede of fans back to your content? Don't miss out on this special deal. Head over to stampede.social. Now, back to the show. So one thing that I'm, I'm fascinated by when it comes to coursework uh, is you, in your bio, mentions co-teaching improvisationally speaking. Yeah, and, yes. And, and improv is, is a world that in, in my uh, previous theatrical life, I... I enjoyed exploring, and it's mm-hmm. one that I find is incredibly useful, as we were talking about with, with the focus of your book, with being put on the spot. What are other lessons of, of improv that can guide us in the world of work? Yes. So that class I teach with uh, Adam Tobin, he's a lecturer in uh, arts at, at Stanford uh, and an improv expert. We've been teaching it for, gosh, almost a decade and a half. And, and it is a true pleasure to teach that class. Uh, it, we, we apply, Adam brings the improv expertise. I, I bring my knowledge of communication and we apply many improv techniques to communication in general, but especially when you're put on the spot. And everybody's familiar, if you know anything about improv, about this notion of yes and. And yes and is all about seeing what's in front of you and accepting it. So when somebody asks you a question, you don't say, no, that's a bad question. You say, (laughs) yes, I will answer that question. So adopting yes and is really important. There are lots of other principles from improv that I think are really powerful for communication. I'll share two. One is don't just stand there. Do, uh, don't just do something, stand there. Don't just do something, stand there. And what that really emphasizes in improv, as you will know from doing scene work, sometimes the most important thing you can do is nothing. Let other people play out something. Let something happen in the moment. You don't always have to be contributing. And when it comes to meetings, when it comes to interactions, sometimes we just need to listen Sometimes we just need to nod our head and say, yes, I hear you. So we don't always have to do something to be effective in the moment in communication. And then uh, there's another great saying from improv, dare to be dull, dare to be dull. Many of us, when we are 
uh, communicating. We want to do it right. We want to be the best version of ourselves. And that puts so much pressure on ourselves to do it at all, let alone do it well. So when we reduce that pressure and we give ourselves permission just to get it done, dare to be dull. Dan Klein, who's a colleague also at Stanford, uh, likes to say, be obvious, just do what's obvious in the moment. And that often is great. And it puts a lot less pressure on you to be uh, your best. Those are are great reminders, and I love the uh, I love the don't just do something. That's one of those yeah. that I have to say very slowly. And yeah, carefully. well, you heard <laughs> I screwed it up, but yeah, don't just do something. Stand there, but yeah, it's wonderful. So another theme that returns frequently in the podcast, and I would imagine is is probably a part of the book as well, is the role that stories play. Uh, this is something that was 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 mentioned in episodes on the neuroscience of story, on covering, uncovering the stories that are told at work, the stories that that aren't. I, I run a program called Story Lab at at mm-hmm. Iowa, and yeah. so it, how it, story is one of those things that I feel like it's almost like a, on on the bingo or on the business bingo card that <laughs> it is taken on really a life of its own, but it's so incredibly important. How do we get beyond the the buzzwordiness of story? I love this question because story has sort of become this mantra that that in some ways becomes a little meaningless because it means so many different things. And and on our business school, and I'm sure at yours, you know, story is taught. And I think it has a very important function. But from my perspective, story is nothing more than a logical connection of ideas. It is about a framework or structure that helps get your audience from one place to another by giving them an experience both intellectually and emotionally. And so when we start looking at story that way, all of a sudden we become open to the idea of the tools that can go into crafting story. And that's where I think those of us who teach and study communication can be really helpful. We know for sure from neuroscience that that our brain is wired for story. We are not wired for lists and rambling. We are wired for story. And so if we can tap into that, it makes it more likely that our messages will be received, will be remembered, and will be acted upon. So I think it's really by dissecting what a story is all about that that then allows us to actually do actionable work rather than just talking about everybody needs to be a good storyteller. Yeah, there's like it's kind of like there's the there's the big surface level message of story good uh, with yes. with the sprinkling of 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 enough neuroscience to make it uh, interesting, but getting like beyond that to like you said, really dissecting it and understanding how it works as a tool is uh, is is I think where there's there's a lot of room. Absolutely. And and those of us who do what we do can help people understand what good story is. For example, good story often involves some kind of emotion, maybe curiosity or concern. How do you bring emotion to the party? It often has a setting of expectations so people know where they're going. There are twists and turns that go throughout. You know, I'll share a quick story in <laughs> we're talking about I see storytelling. What you did I should there. tell a story. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> um, so I, I have always been fascinated by the company Lego. When I was young, I loved building Legos. Actually, I will use Lego as therapy for myself. It's cheaper than paying a therapist. Uh, you know, I'll build some <laughs> things that really helps me focus. I interviewed for my book the, the guy who's in charge of all of Lego's manuals. And if you've ever seen a Lego manual, as a communication person, you, you probably find this fascinating. There are no words. They have no words. And yet you can build these amazing things. Uh, and when I talked to him about how do you think about designing your manuals, he said that they see them as stories. And this blew me away. It's like, what? Really? And upon thinking about it, you could make a Lego manual where every single page had exactly the same number of steps and used exactly the same number of pieces. You could do that, right? Some, some big sets would have big manuals, some would have small, but they actually see them as stories where they build in an emotional experience. They build in momentum. So when you're building a Lego set, you are actually having an experience that drives you to complete it and to feel a sense of satisfaction. So sometimes things are very quick and easy. Sometimes things are a little more challenging. Think about that. What does that mean on, if you can do that with an instruction manual, what could you do that with 
when you're creating or commenting on vision, creating values, creating some kind of direction for a company or organization. Oh my goodness, if we can do this with an instruction manual, what could we do with something that's far more, I don't want to say important, but far more meaningful in many people's lives? That is great. I'm a huge fan of Lego also. And if I needed another reason to pick up the book, <laughs> uh, learning more about the Lego instruction manuals may, yeah. may in fact be it. Now, <laughs> we've talked a lot about your podcast and yes. we're going to get to the question I usually wrap up my podcast with, but you have a great set of questions and I recently in my in my email newsletter have been trying to answer my own wrap up question because no one's ever turned it around on me. So huh. I thought it might be fun to do something similar here. And you ask people for a communicator that you admire and why. So that's what I wanted to hear your take on. Absolutely. So there are many people I admire. Uh, there is somebody that I have admired for a number of years uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, she talks a lot about confidence and I study confidence and I'm interested in confidence. I look at confidence in communication. She looks at confidence more broadly about being confident in the world of which obviously communication is a part. She's a young dynamic woman. Her name is Brittany Packnett, P-A-C-K-E-T-T. And she, uh, I think I left out an N, it's PacNet, N-E-T-T. Uh, she is uh, just an amazing dynamic speaker, great storyteller, has the whole package of a compelling story, structured well, delivered with passion. Uh, I encourage everybody to check out. She's got some TED Talks and other talks online. Can be great to check out what she does and more importantly, how she does it. That's awesome, and and certainly high praise. If uh, if you always asking people who a communicator they admire, and you having heard and having researched so much, hearing uh, that is is definitely something. And we'll be sure to link up to uh, to Brittany in our show notes as well. Yes, yes, Matt. It has reached the point in the podcast where I get to ask you for a brand that has made you smile recently, even though we already mentioned Lego. So maybe there's another. One. <laughs> yeah. So Lego always makes me smile. Um, but uh, I use this tool. It's a very, this is a very, you know, sort of day to day sort of brand. Uh, I do a lot of email. Many people listening in probably do a ton of email. There is a brand called Superhuman. Superhuman sits on top of your email platform and it actually helps you be more efficient in your use of email. And it subscribes to the inbox zero principle. So the idea is to be so efficient that you have, you're have you not holding on to tons of emails. And every time I use the tool, I smile. I feel as if I'm cheating because it's helping me be so productive. And they do such a great job of reinforcing uh, the goal of having fewer things in your inbox. Uh, it is a brand that makes me smile. And Nick, I'm not going to let you off the hook because you said nobody has ever asked you the question. I am a podcast host. Nick, what is a recent brand that has made you smile? Uh, I am a big fan of Cricket Shirts. Uh -huh. Cricket Shirts. K-R-I-Q-U-E-T. They're a company out of Austin, Texas. And they make... Uh, uh, kind of vintage styled uh, like polo or golf shirts with like a few more buttons and kind of the extra pointed collars like a, uh -huh, a, a uh -huh. 70s uh, coach or uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just kind of a classic, but they uh, have really fun packaging uh, with uh, and, and kind of uh, inspired Instagram. They have uh uh, various people, like with the recent passing of, of Jimmy Buffett, uh, him being the sort of fashion icon that they they work to embody. So they have a a uh -huh. wonderful presence on on Instagram, and I'm a big fan of their shirts. Awesome. See, I just learned something, and, and you got to share something that you haven't shared before. So there we go. You put me on the spot, and to bring <laughs> things full circle, I started sweating again. So I <laughs> and you need to buy an extra shirt to I, deal with I, that. I, I See, do, it I do. all. I need an it, extra shirt, and I need something cold <laughs> for my for the palm of my hand right now. So. There you go. It's all. It all. We've summarized the whole episode in the last thirty seconds. <laughs> Matt, where can folks go to learn more about who you are and what you do? 
Uh, I try to make it really simple. MattAbrahams.com has everything about me. I'm a big user of LinkedIn. Please take a, a moment to connect with me if you are a LinkedIn user. And and like Nick, listen into the podcast, uh, Think Fast, Talk Smart. We hope to provide lots of insight around communication. Awesome. Well, we will link up to all of that in our show notes, which folks can find at OnBrandPodcast.com. Matt, thanks for being on brand with us. Nick, thanks for having me. On Brand is part of the Marketing Podcast Network. If you like what you're hearing, if we've made you smile, you can always listen free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever your favorite platform may be. And please take a moment and rate and review the podcast to help others find the show. Until next week, I'm Nick Westergaard, and I'll see you on the internet. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.